Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be putting together a gaming PC with no video card because as we know, it's really hard to get a hold of a decent video card for a decent price at the time of making this video. So in this video, we're going to be building an AMD APU powered gaming rig that we can game on right now and later on down the road, once prices come down on those video cards, we'll be able to slap something in here like a GTX 1660 and dramatically increase the performance. But once this is done today, it's actually going to produce some pretty decent results for integrated graphics. So I'm super excited about this. I will be going over the parts as we start the build. I'll also list them in the description so you can see what was used in here. But let's go ahead and jump right into it with the main bread and butter of this whole build, and that's the APU. So for this one here, we're actually going with the Ryzen 5 4650G. These are about $250 on eBay, and some of them do include a Wraith cooler. And I know it's a bit more than a lot of people want to spend on an APU, but even if you were to look at the 3400G right now, this is not far off from that price and the PC part climate we're in right now. Plus, instead of getting four cores with that 3400G, we get six cores, 12 threads, and a boost clock of 4.2 gigahertz. All right, so let's go ahead and jump right into the build. For the motherboard, I'm using the Asus B550MA Prime. Now, this is not a super top-of-the-line motherboard, but we do have two M.2 slots, and it supports these 4000 series APUs right out of the box. And it's actually coming in at a relatively decent price at $104 on Amazon. My main storage is going to be covered by a 512 gigabyte silicon power NVMe SSD. I've already inserted it here into the top slot. Now it's time to move over to this APU. And like we've already talked about, this is the AMD Ryzen 5 Pro 4650G. 6 cores, 12 threads, base clock 3.7 with a boost up to 4.2. And we have the built-in Radeon 7 graphics at 1900 MHz, but we will be doing a little overclocking to 2300 for this video. Go ahead and lock that down. Now it's time for my CPU cooler. Now, the unit that I bought here didn't come with the Wraith cooler, so I went ahead and opted to get something different. I kind of wanted to keep this thing really cool and kind of keep it with the theme of the whole PC build that I'm going with. So I opted for the ID Cooling SE224XT white version. So I'm going to go ahead and get this installed, then we'll move over to the RAM. Now when it comes to these APU builds, RAM speed is very, very important. You don't want to cheap out with some 2400MHz RAM because you're not going to get great performance. I opted for some Team Force Dark Z at 3600MHz. But I've had really good luck overclocking this to 4000 with a click of a button in these ASUS BIOSes. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing in this video. By the way, this is a 16 gigabyte kit and obviously we're going to be running in dual channel and that's exactly what you want for an APU build. So yeah, everything's looking pretty good. I have my SSD installed, CPU, CPU cooler, and RAM. Now I'm going to go ahead and drop this inside of the case. And for the case I'm using here, this is the Dark Flash DLM22. They offer these in a few different colors. You can pick one up in black, white, pink, or mint green. Obviously, I picked up mint green, and I think it looks really good. Kind of going with that green and white build with a little bit of RGB mixed in. Let me go ahead and line this up with the IO shield that I just installed. And by the way, this is a micro ATX board, but this case also supports mini ITX. So I've got my motherboard mounted in here. It's looking pretty decent. I'm going to go ahead and add my power supply. And for that, I went with a 500 watt Smart Series Thermal Take power supply. It's non-modular and it doesn't have those braided cables, but I really wanted this thing to look pretty decent inside. So I went with some Antec sleeved extension cables. You can pick them up for 20 bucks in basically any color. I went with the white version, and I actually think they look really good in this build. It definitely cleans everything up. So I'm almost done here, but I do need to add some fans to this build to keep everything cool. So I opted for a 5-pack of the Asia Horse RGB fans. I've actually used one of their products in the past, and it worked out really well. So I figured I'd go ahead and pick these up, and I actually like it. I do think it looks really good. Now, I ordered the 5-pack, and I should have ordered one extra. I wish they had a 6-pack on Amazon. I'm missing one fan up top because I really wasn't planning on using one of these for the CPU cooler, but I've already placed an order for a single fan, and it should be here in the next couple days, so that'll be fixed up. So with the build completed, it's time to get into some testing and see how this thing really performs. Keep in mind, we're kind of building this as a placeholder. We're going to be able to game right now, but later on we can always throw a real video card in this unit and get even better performance. But the way prices are right now for GPUs, it's really hard to get your hands on one. But you still might want to build a PC right now, and personally, I think this is an excellent option. 
Okay, so before we jump right into it, I just want to show you what I changed in the BIOS on these AMD APUs, especially with these ASUS boards. It actually makes it really easy. Now, you could go in and tweak all of this manually, but for a basic overclock on the RAM and the GPU, I use the AI Overclock Tuner. We're going to go DOCP. 3600 is the base clock of this memory, but I want to take this up to 4000. And this actually works really well at 4000. You can always go in and do this manually and change the timings if you want to. But for a basic overclock, it does work out on these boards. Next thing I do is go to my GPU boost extreme mode. It's going to take it up to 2300 megahertz. Now we could overclock the CPU, but since we're working with these integrated graphics, I mean, we're already kind of bottlenecking the CPU. So I would personally suggest just saving this for later on down the road when you add a real dedicated GPU to this system, because the stock clocks with the integrated Radeon 7 is going to be perfect. Save changes and reset. Okay, so everything's working really well so far. I've got Windows 10 Pro installed. Like we just saw, I've overclocked the GPU and that RAM. We have the 4650G with built-in Radeon graphics. These are Radeon 7 graphics, and usually they're at 1900 megahertz. We're up to 2300 on this because we did that little bit of an AI overclock in the BIOS. Using this as an everyday desktop is going to be just fine. You want to do some photo editing, some video editing, I mean some web browsing, 4K video playback. It'll handle all the little work you do throughout the day. I mean, this is a pretty decent little system given that we have integrated graphics. Now, first thing I always like to do is run some benchmarks, and I've got a few to go over. First up, we have Geekbench 5, single core, 1156, multi, 5991. I was actually surprised to see we're almost at 1200 on that single core. Next up, we have Cinebench R23, total multi-core score, 9,123. I also ran PC Mark. And we got a total score of 5,777. Moving over to some GPU benchmarks with 3D Mark Night Raid, 16,971. Firestrike, 4,059. And finally, Time Spy coming in with a 1,529. Really not bad at all when it comes to integrated graphics, but let's go ahead and see how this thing really performs with PC gaming and emulation. So first up, we have Overwatch 1080p, medium settings, and it averaged 82 FPS. Keep in mind, we do have that GPU overclock from the BIOS. If we take a look at Afterburner up in the top left-hand corner, you can see that that Radeon 7 is pegged out at 2300 megahertz, and this does make a bit of a difference. I mean, every little bit we can get out of these APUs does help out. Next up, we have GTA 5 1080p with a normal high mix settings. I did try this on high, but unfortunately it was dipping into the 50, so I had to turn some of the stuff down to normal. But with the settings I'm using here, after it was all said and done, I got an average of 67 FPS out of this game. Fortnite did really well, got a high medium mix settings at 1080p, 100% resolution scale, got an average of 119 FPS with this one. Overall, it is playable on this machine. CSGO, 1080p, high settings, we averaged 112 FPS once this match was finished. Now when it comes to the harder to run games like Doom Eternal, I did have to drop it down to 900p low, and even then I wasn't at 60 FPS. This is always struggled on these APUs. So at 1600 by 900 low settings, we got an average of 49 FPS. I was really hoping to see some better numbers out of this. We're at 100% resolution scale, and that would be the best bet in getting a little more out of it. I would personally drop it down to around 80%. When it comes to emulation on this build, it does an amazing job. First up, we have PS2 using PCSX2 upscaled to 2K using the DirectX 11 backend. 
Gran Turismo 4 running at full speed. It'll also handle Wii U using the SimU emulator. We got the Vulcan back in, async shaders, upscaled to 1080p, Breath of the Wild, running really well here. I always like locking this at 30 because there are some issues that present themselves at 60, but I did test it at 60 and I only averaged 58. So going down to 30 with this is your best bet. It's still really playable and I think it looks great at 1080p. And finally, PS3 using RPCS3, Skate 3 here, Vulcan back in, running at full speed. It really comes down to those extra threads on that CPU, but uh, we're getting great performance with RPCS3. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the cost of the build you're seeing in this video. And I'm also going to give you an alternate build that will actually net you the same exact performance, but it's going to be a bit cheaper. So for everything you've seen here, we're at $691. Now I do have a lot of stuff here that really isn't necessary, like those extra cables, the RGB fans, and even this case here. If you want to get out a bit cheaper, you're going to use the Wraith cooler that comes with that 4650G, so we're still at the same price. We're going to use the same RAM, same motherboard, and same NVMe. Basically, what we're going to be taking away is the case, power supply, and RGB fans. You can pick up a Rosewell FBM X2 case with a 400 watt power supply for $54, bringing the total cost down to under $550, and you're going to get basically the same performance because all we really did here was overclock that RAM. We're going to be using the same RAM with that other case and overclock that GPU. So if you don't mind having a plain Jane case and no RGB, something like this can be built for under 550 bucks. And with prices the way they are right now, I do think that this would be worth building. Because once those GPU prices come down, we can upgrade this thing with a nice dedicated video card and that CPU will keep up. But in the meantime, we can use these integrated graphics and play some of our favorite games even though we have to drop some of the settings down. But in the end, it's really up to you. If you're looking to game now and you really can't wait for all of these prices to come down, I do think that this is a viable option. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in putting something like this together, I will leave some links in the description. I'll do the build that we used in this video and that alternate cheaper build. All links will be down below. If you want to see anything else running on this or if you want to see what this can do with, let's say, a 1660 in it, let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.